Okay, 10 o'clock. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, you will see that we have an observer up in the top corner, Emily. Um, she Hi guys. Hello. Here Hi. In the office and she's just checking out what we do and how it works and all that good stuff. So behave yourselves. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we are covering launch number five. I know typically we try to do two videos. Yeah, three hour. Hour. Okay. Yep. Alisa, there you go. Thank you. Um, but with the buyer's documents and the listing documents, we usually can't really cover two at once. So um, last week we talked about the buyers, you know, the process, putting together an offer. Everybody um, who has been going through the session of launch was to put together a uh, mock offer for me to go ahead and take a look at and make any, um, you know, corrections or, or notes. Uh, we have more people here than we usually do. I'm kind of excited. So I received one from Marsha. I received one from Marnie. I don't see her on here. And then Hope, I just got yours uh, a couple of minutes ago. So I'll go ahead and I'll look at that. Anybody else here in launch who has not, because I know some of you guys are going through this for a second time, you know, and you have, but who have not actually written an offer or Warren, like you kind of just jumped in in the middle. So you're okay. You know, but if, you start, if you've started at launch one and you're at this point in launch, what we talked about last week and what your assignment was supposed to be is to write an offer, a mock offer so that you can kind of work the bugs out and feel a little more comfortable doing it when you really have to do it on a Sunday afternoon because it's highest and best by six o'clock that night. Right. And you're not freaking out. So um, what I do is I go through, I read them uh, on an email. I just make little notes about maybe changes that you have to make. The little things you guys by, are doing a good job. The little things that I tend to notice are, um, uh, you know, oh, well, a couple people in a row actually did not put appliances or things that are included with the purchase agreement, right? You have to remember to do that. The refrigerator, the stove, the microwave, um, you can copy and paste that from the MLS listing and just put it in there. But if there's other stuff, like for instance, I just wrote an offer um, this past week and they happen to have two kitchens in this home. So I don't think the MLS allows you to add more than that. But so what I did was refrigerator times two, microwave times two, right? I wanted to make sure because it's always better to be safe than sorry than when you walk through on your uh, walkthrough and there's stuff missing. So, um, so thank you to the people that sent me their purchase agreements. Anybody who has not, and who still needs to, and like I said, who is at this place in launch, not if you kind of, you know, just jumped in, please still do it, do it because it will help you. It will help you when the time comes that you actually have to write the offer. Um, I, got a few phone calls over the weekend from other agents that are in coaching that wanted help. And my answer to them is write the offer as best as you can, then send it to me and we'll go through it together. Matt and I, it's best for you guys to do it that way. Cause Matt and I don't want to sit there on the phone and write the offer for you on a zoom call, right? That's not the point when everybody's under the gun and busy, you know, and they want to get it right. So practice, practice, practice. Um, so today is going over listings, uh, listing um, presentations, and the listing paperwork when you finally get that first listing. Who watched video number five? I did. Yep. One person? Two. Warren, you watched it? Sweet. Oh, Sarah watched it. Good. Marsha. Yay. All right. Because this is supposed to be Q&A, right? I'll start with questions. Who has some questions? It's been a while. I think I watched it a couple weeks ago, so I don't remember. Okay. So I'll have to go through my notes. Hold on. Um, All right. Uh, Sharon, yep. I have yep, a question. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. um, so I had a client. Um, actually, this was like maybe three weeks ago. I had a client that called and wanted, um, I think I texted you about the, the prospect. 
she wanted me to come over and do an estimate of not only her home's value, but uh, estimate of the repairs that she mm -hmm. felt she may need to make mm -hmm. her house marketable. Mm -hmm. um, so my presentation, my listing presentation was going to include an estimation of just general household repairs that are like national. I think you can get that information from like Home Depot or a yeah. local, okay. Google it, right? Yeah. So my question is when you get a call like that and they're asking for estimates, is it wise to just get like a national average to tell them? Or should I have a contractor with me? Or should I talk to a contractor before I go? Well, I would say that um, it's not our, it's we're not in our lane when we're giving people estimates on repairs. That's oh, not what right. we do, right? Now, there's nothing wrong with referring to some third party site maybe and saying, this is what these guys say nat nationally, but you would be better off talking to someone in the area. And here you go. I've got a list of three people you can talk to. Okay. Right? Okay. Or maybe if they already know that they're that much on board, maybe you do bring somebody with you. Right. Okay. It's not your job to do the estimate because you're not the one who's going to be charging it. Right. And then if you're wrong. Okay. So know. it's, it's best to take with me resources to give to them and then, yes. you know, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Um, I mean, I've certainly sat there and said, well, you know, I got my carpet done and it was about $4,000, but you know, but I don't know, you'd have to get somebody to come out and look at it. You know, that's just in conversation. It's not an estimate. Okay. Any other questions? No. Um, yeah. I have another question. Yep. Um, so I was confused about the paperwork because I was putting the listing presentation together mm -hmm. and um, I was going by what was in uh, the DocuSign group. And the, doctor, the DocuSign group had a lot of extra forms that yeah. I didn't know if I should include. So I just included what you shared with us when I was in launch the first time. Are you talking about for listing or buyers? No, for the listing. Listing, okay. So here, if you go and you access the coaching drive that we have under number five, you will mm -hmm. see this chart that shows you what the listing documents are that you need to be filled out that or that need to be filled out. So there's the side that is um, related to the actual piece of property, right? And your relationship with them. And then the administrative side is compliance things and stuff like that, that we need, but you need to do all of these. Okay. We are updating this list because when everything got switched over from dot loop to DocuSign, there were minor changes in the titles of these forms, but they are 98% the same name, right? So you can, these are all still in those groups, in those listing groups. If you are regularly attending Pete's forums, you're also learning how to fill all these out. Go ahead, Andrea. Um, so for the listing presentation, the only thing that I printed out and um, was going to take with me was the exclusive right to sell, the lead-based paint, the seller's disclosure, and the disclosure to the agency relationship because it was the presentation. It wasn't the actual um, I guess, you know, getting ready to close. No, I get the what deal. you're saying. Well, I hear you. Okay. So the exclusive right to sell the, there is also a designated agency addendum to the listing contract, which actually names you. That's another part. You have to have that. You're right with the lead-based paint, the seller disclosure. Um, do you want them to do a home warranty? If you want them to offer that, you would want to bring that and get that taken care of right away. Okay. Right? Okay. Okay. Um, the listing form for the residential condo sale is something that I find yeah. helpful yeah. to make sure I'm not forgetting anything. So yeah. those are the things that need to go in the MLS, right? So that, that form, all right, hold on. I'm jumping ahead of myself. I don't want to get all over the place. Let's 
let's go in the order this agenda to begin with, because I don't want to skip stuff. Okay. All right. So if you guys watched the video and I do want you to go back and do it because it's an hour and a half long, you will see a lot of this stuff more in depth. So listing presentation, a lot of times new agents get hung up, um, you know, paralysis by analysis, like they don't know what to take because they want to look good. Right. So luckily um, command command has done something for us in designs, which is really cool. They didn't have this back when I was first doing this. If you go to print, whoops. It's coming. All right, if you go under listings right here, there's listing presentations, right? There are a bajillion um, pages in these. You do not have to use them all because this can help all sorts of agents in all sorts of different situations. You know, so it's a lot of information you can go through. Like here's the instructions. It tells you that you need to customize this in the way that best serves you for whatever your needs are, right? Every section is written and designed to highlight an intended purpose. You have to carefully review all the content and customize it to you. Um, like in sections where numbers such as units sold or closed volume are included, put in your own stuff, your own story. If you don't want to use that page, don't use it. But, you know, these are all cool, graphically pleasing presentations that are already in here that you don't need to worry about. I used to get hung up on what font am I going to use? What size picture do I want to put on? You know, you just, and that comes out of fear, right? It's the unknown. This is already laid out for you. Just do it, right? Put together whatever you want. Yeah. <laughs> Comparable properties. The process, this helps teach your client what the process is gonna look like. It's a good conversation piece while you're sitting there at the table across from them. Makes you the expert. Um, what's your marketing plan gonna look like? How are you gonna find a buyer, right? What's your media plan gonna be? So, you know, Whether it be flyers or social media, are you gonna do postcards, right? Does that make sense? Are you yeah. going to have in houses, right? That's going to depend on what's going on with us here. It's not opening up. There we go. All sorts of stuff, right? This is good. If you are worried, like over here where it says, um, did I miss it? Where it talks about the numbers, right? How many years in the business? How many total clients? When you're brand new, you don't have any of that, Right? Don't let that limit you. You can use our office numbers. If, if you even want to use this page, right? You don't have to, but use our office numbers. We have over 300 licensed agents in this office. We are one of the largest brokerages in our region, in our area, right? We have a huge network. You can go through and find out um, uh, like what is our volume in sales, or in numbers of units, all that stuff is available at every team meeting that we have. Um, if you don't have those PDFs anywhere, ask the front desk. They'll get you all those numbers. You can say, I am part of this group. I am part of this team that's doing all these great things. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Embrace that. Like, you know, here's the same type of thing. Oh no, this is numbers for, um, your area, right? How many days on the market, all sorts of stuff. So, and then also there's the different um, layouts, right? So that was one in particular, or, you know, maybe you like this one. It looks a little different, whatever. There's four different ones you can look at. Right, see, this is a little more contemporary looking. You just pick what you want. It's all the same stuff, same information, just put together in a different way, right? So build this, start building this this week so that when you get that phone call from your aunt who tells you that her neighbor wants to sell their house, you can plan 
and make an appointment for a day or two from then without freaking out that you don't even have a piece of paper to walk in there with. It's about being prepared, right? That's why we practice doing the purchase agreements. It's so that you're prepared because you don't want to get an appointment and say, let's make it next week because I don't have a listing presentation. You want to have your listing presentation put together so that the only thing you have to put in there are your comps, things that are just um, unique to that particular appointment. All right. So then the next. Can I ask a quick question on that? For sure. Absolutely. So once we pick one and customize it or whatever, then in within command, do we save it within our own command or are we saving it like just on our computer? I do both. So okay. I download it as a PDF. You know, once you're done, you can just download it. And that's what I print and save. I might send it electronically to a client or maybe I'll print it out and have it bound, you know, I'll do something like that, but then it will always live here and you can come back to it and edit it. So it's complete. Once we click on whatever one we're doing, it's completely editable within command. Correct. Not outside of once it's a PDF, it's yep. okay. flat. Right. Yep. Okay. This little drop down box keeps popping up. I hate it. There we go. All right, so you guys need to start working on your listing presentations so that you're ready when the time comes. Now, back to the document. So this week's homework is gonna be put together all the paperwork as though you are getting a listing. I find that a lot of people can do that, right? Just the way they do with an offer, but then they get stuck and they get nervous when it comes to actually putting the listing into the MLS right? There are lots of videos on real comp that can teach you how to do that. Um, but I'm going to show you really quickly. Uh, I should have done this before because now I'm just winging it. I wasn't planning on doing this. <laughs> okay. Once you have all your paperwork done for your listing, right? Again, go to Pete's forums, watch that stuff because we don't want to spend hours and hours showing you how to fill out every book in the form. That's why we have those other resources here at the market center, right? Um, same thing with this. Like I said, there's videos on, on this real comp page, but quickly you're going to go to input and you either add a new one or edit an existing listing. Chances are you're going to be adding a new one, right? So you have these options. You can either use the digital form of that residential condo listing form, which is one of the things that you guys have to have. Oh, come on, this header, go away. There we go. Right, that's this thing right here. Mm -hmm. So let me tell you, for compliance with the office, all they wanna see is that your client approves of all the information that you're putting in the MLS to market their home. That's the intention of having this signed by the client and why it's required, right? For compliance. So you can either have this listing form signed by your client once you've filled it out or once you input everything into the MLS before you go live, have your, just put a little signature um, field at the bottom of the MLS ticket. Like if you save a PDF of the MLS ticket, put it in a DocuSign, just have them sign the MLS ticket. And it's the same thing mm -hmm. as far as compliance for the office. Okay. The reason why I think it's good to print this form out blank and take it with you, at least for sure at the beginning is because if you go and click this, did, I don't know, did you see that? You click using a residential condo listing form, right? Mm -hmm. Which is what you have to do to get started. All the fields that are in that printed form are all gonna show up here and you need to know what you're gonna fill out. You need to know what the information is, right? So, uh, shoot. I don't have a property ID to print in here right now, but if you, put in a property ID number, I'll just pick one, I guess, from the PRD, 
right, from the public records, it will automatically fill in all your tax information and your lot, uh, not your lot lines, but it'll fill out a lot of stuff. Maybe, maybe I'm in the wrong county. I don't know what that number is. Let's see, search. Oh, that was one of my old listings. There you go, see? So then you click fill. I'm doing this as a partial because I may take a few days. I may take a week to have to fill this out. I don't, I'm not gonna do it all in one set and sitting, right? One setting. So it's a partial save. If you were to do it as active, that means as soon as you're done filling this out and you hit the submit listing button, you're on the MLS, you're live. Scary, right? You don't have everything in there, right? Coming soon. See here where it says the coming soon activation date. If you click it as coming soon, you are required to put in a coming soon activation date because the MLS will automatically kick you into active as soon as you hit that date. The rules are you at the most, oh God, now I got to remember. Is it seven? Hey, Emily, do you know? I, is think, it's, seven? I think it's seven. Seven, yeah. Seven business days, not calendar days, okay? So if you wanted to start a coming soon on a Thursday, that's Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So the next Friday could be the furthest out that you could do your coming soon date, right? All right, so I'm just gonna do partial save just to show you um, what these pages look like. So, right, it's your contact name, it's what's your list price, where's your lockbox gonna go, what kind of access are you gonna have, is it a short sale, this stuff you can, you you know, right? You don't need to fill out that form when you're at the client's office. See, here's your um, your township, your taxes, your legal description. All of that gets auto-loaded if you use the property ID to fill it out. If you go and say you want to fill it out from blank, you're going to have to go to the PRD and start picking all this information up and re-entering it, which I don't like to do. So... <clears throat> Where do we get the PRD number again? If you look for, if you go to here and you search okay. for a house. Yeah. You, does that sound familiar? You know what that is now? Okay. Yeah. So let's say you're sitting there across the table at your listing presentation and you may, you may know that they're near water somewhere. So you'll ask them, do you have canal access or is it canal front? Um, is it lakefront? Do you have other lake privileges? Do, you know, there's questions you may want to ask that you don't realize are on this list that you would know if you had it in front of you. Um, especially your first few times, right? Because you're nervous. So like you may look here and say, oh, the outside. Was the outside aluminum siding and brick or was it vinyl siding and brick? Or was it just brick? Or I don't remember, you know. Um, you know, exterior things. Do they, do they have a satellite dish out there? Do they have outside lighting? These are things that may not be right in the front of your brain when you're sitting there trying to seal this deal and get them to sign your listing, right? They don't know, uh, like some people, for instance, like, I don't know what I have outside. I'm just saying. Right. Well, you would go outside and, and look. Check out yourself. And, right. Because you'll remember, right? So, or like cooling, do they have ceiling fans? Sometimes you walk away from a house and you're like, damn, did they only have one or did they have one in every room? Like you just, I think it's helpful. And you may not really use most of it, but I'll sit there with a checklist and I'll just like hash mark things. So then it's easier for me when I come back and I have to put it together, right? Take this with you, like you print this out and take it with I do. You. Okay. I do, yeah. Is and like there I said, a way if like, say like attic fan, if they're like, I don't know, we don't know because we're not going up there. Like, is there a way to find out stuff somewhere else if they don't know and we don't know? Um, well, so I can tell you an attic fan, if they have an attic fan, you'll know it. You look up into the, the ceiling in the hallway and it's a big, huge vent that's like two and a half feet by a foot. 
So they'll Those know if they have an attic. Those are common anymore, right? Uh, houses that are built in the 50s and 60s have them. Okay. That we come across, right? Um, the other thing, can but, I say really quick something? Are so, there things sometimes that they don't know? Yeah. And I mean, you just, you have to do your best, right? I'm trying to think of what else. I would say, sure. think, yeah, go ahead. Mary, I'm sorry. So they can, one other thing too, you can look on an old MLS listing. I don't suggest that you go buy that because that other right. agent could have put things in incorrect, but at least it kind of gives you a guideline to maybe, yeah. and then you can check with them and say, all right, you know, if you don't remember something or something like that. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Garbage in, garbage out. You never know. Um, also going to an old MLS listing um, for room dimensions, especially on certain houses. If the, if the measurements are already there, I, I'll use them. <laughs> I don't, I, you know, if you're off by six inches on a room one way or the other, that's not really going to matter. You know what I mean? So these are all the things that are in that printed form and it's why you need it. It's because you're going to end up having to fill these things out later. Right. Um, right here, this is also helpful. So when you're putting the rooms in, so room type, um, I'm going to put in a master bedroom. I don't know. It's 15 by 20. It's on the first level. Do you remember if it was carpet or wood or laminate, right? So that's another thing that I find it's, after a while, you know, you'll have a notebook with you and you'll just start writing those things down. But it never hurts to have this blank sheet sitting there in your folder. Why not? Use Could you like take pictures blank. when you're walking around? Could you take pictures? So that you remember all this stuff? If if the client's okay with it. Okay. And one more. Pete has this in his... Are you recommending printing this out or using the Pete's forms? That I, would, I would use the one that's in Pete's forms. There's different, some people say, don't bother doing that. Cause then once you put it in here, you're doing the work twice and you know, you need to do what you feel comfortable with to make sure that you have all the information you need to accurately input your, your listing. You know what hey, I mean? Sharon. Yeah. Can we print from this form from the MLS or only from DocuSign? The only way you can print this from the MLS is to like screenshot or like print each page. Okay. So it needs to come right. I go here, that. print, and then, you know, you could do that if you want to, that's fine. It's Sharon, whatever you feel like doing. Yes. When, when you're going through the, uh, each individual room and stuff, uh, mm -hmm. how you were on the previous page, is mm -hmm. there an option for like, because I've seen, for example, in, in my house, the living room and the dining room are contained within the same four walls. Is there something like, like an option like that? A great room? There's a great room. Oh, so that's what that is. There's right, lots I'm going to have to go through stuff. and probably just like there, read right. all the, yeah. yeah. That's right. You guys need to go through and practice this, right? You need to get to know this. Yeah, but I've never heard of a in, room. <laughs> there's in-law quarters, right? If you have a home that could have a whole... Um, space that's considered its own living space, right? Because it has a little kitchen and maybe a private door and a bathroom and a bed. You could call those in-laws quarters. Why not? Or maybe somebody has an apartment above a garage somewhere that, or a carriage house that has living space in it. All sorts of different things, right? Mud room, loft, recreation room. Lots of options. This is whole quick question for you. Yep. Um, just taking a step back to where initially were when you had the options for coming soon, which I understand is seven days or less, correct? Seven business days or less, correct. Business days or less. And partial save, is there a time frame or rule about how long you can stay in partial save? There is. <laughs> and I'm trying to remember exactly what it is. It might be 30 days. It might be a month or something because I put in a listing around Christmas as a partial save because I thought it was going to go live the first couple of weeks of January. We didn't go live until the last few days of January and it expired. It got wiped yeah. out and we had to fill it in all over again. <laughs> what, ha so, I was gonna ask, what happens? So it wipes yeah. out. 
Mm-hmm. You'll get a warning. You'll get an email from uh, Real Comp that says, "Hey, you got five days left until your partial save is gone." Okay. Yeah, it says it there on the second paragraph on your screen. Oh, oh does okay. it? Oh, there you go. Thirty days. Thank you. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm having a. I'm going back and forth about entering one right now. I have a contractor who loves innovating. <laughs> And he's gone wild. So I don't know if, I guess if all ha- that happens is it gets deleted, that's that's okay. Yeah, it's practice. Just keep filling it out. The other thing I would say is, let me go to the last page, page five. Come on. So this is where you would put in, you know, is there an association fee? What's the period? What does it cover? I don't, I've never seen anybody put down what the working capital is or stuff like that. So it's more about, is there an association fee? How much is it? Um, like what's the period, right? Annual, monthly, whatever. And you can put the contact name or a website and over okay. here what it includes, you know, like whatever, water, snow removal, trash, you know. Um, this part right here, terms and compensation. I never enter in the list date until I'm ready to list it, until I'm ready to go active. I did that once in the past. And um, let me look right here. Cause if you see, it says enter the listing contract date when all necessary signatures were secured. So that basically would say, when did you get your contract signed? Right? Not mm-hmm. when you're active. I don't know. Real comp would probably get mad at me if they heard me say this, but don't fill that out. Do not fill that out until the day you're going to go live and make it your live date. Because I learned the hard way my first year doing this, your days on market clock starts with that. And that sucks. Because if I got everything signed today and I'm not going live for a week and I put that date in as today, when I go live a week from now, it's going to say I was already on the market for seven days. Wow. That's a bit too. That's crappy. So that's my um, learn from my mistakes. Don't make your own tip for today. I have one more question associated yep. with the, the stuff we were just talking about. So in the event that they do another renovation and it's not captured, in this online documentation. This is another reason I've held off because he's doing things and I'm going to have to go back, mm-hmm. capture the stuff that he's done. Mm-hmm. What is the penalty if he's done something that he snuck in at the last minute after I've updated this? Well, I you can go in and update this anytime you want. Okay, so there's no, because uh, I was told once you make it active that the, you can't change the public remarks or public information or something. You can change public remarks. Yeah, oh. you can go in there and make those changes. Okay. But make sure you walk through like the day before, like try not to let anything sneak by you. Okay. Right, so you don't have to, but yeah, you can go in there. Okay. I have one more question too. Yep. If dealing with, and this I guess applies to buy side or list side, if you're dealing with someone who isn't in your MLS, and I'm only asking. Oh, that. yeah, because you're pleasant. So is the, like the HOA stuff and everything, is the, the way to go about that, just asking the other agent or someone would ask you if you were the listing agent and you would have to send it via email. Have you already made an offer? Or you're just looking for information? I made an offer. I just asked for the HOA information. Yeah. Yep. Couldn't see any of this. Well, yeah. So did you fill out an addendum? Yes. In our offer, we did. Okay, good. So not going that way, but I, I guess I was thinking from the other way, if I was the listing agent and someone couldn't, I, you wouldn't just assume everyone can always see all this either, right? That's true, right. So you could, yeah, without having access to the MLS, I mean, like the offer I'm working on right now, they put the bylaws of the whole condo up on the, the document section. So I don't have to ask them for any of that stuff, right? Okay. Or maybe you could put in the realtor comments or even in the public comments, right? Because if someone doesn't have access to your MLS, and they're finding you on realtor.com, right? Um, they're not gonna see the realtor side of the comments. They're just gonna see the regular comments. You could put on there um, for condo bylaws, reach out to the listing agent. Okay. Something like that. Make sense? Yep. Cause I think, 
I know, like you'll get flagged if you try to put your phone number on there by right. Zillow and those guys. Um, because, right, they're in the business of giving leads to people, not to you. Right. Yeah. All right. So I just wanted to go over this so you guys could see it and think about it because that's always something that comes up. You know, we talk about filling out forms, but then when it comes to actually putting the, the, uh, listing into the MLS, people kind of, you know, freak out. So when what you're all done. Working capital? I'm sorry, I'm stuck. What is that? What, do, what does that's, that mean? That's the money. You're not, you're probably not going to know that as a listing agent, okay. unless you call the homeowners association or the management company and start asking them. That's capital that the homeowners association or management company is working with and saves up for assessments and like different things that they have to do. Okay. Thank you. And in, in my situation, like they won't, they wouldn't give that to me because they're saying it has to go through the lunch. Oh, it's lunch. Say hi. Lunch. Hi, lunch. Uh, <laughs> hi, Pete. <laughs> nice um, so once you hit the submit listing button, if there's any errors, if there's any spaces that you missed, uh, it'll pop up here, like page one, two, three, four, will like turn red and have a little exclamation point on it or something. And it'll take you to that spot and tell you uh, what you need to change. Once everything looks good, right? Cause then also back here on page five at the very bottom, this is where you put your remarks. Oh, this is a gem. It's a wonderful little home. You'll love raising your family here, you know, blah, 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 whatever you want to put there. <laughs> That all goes there. Once all that's done, now you upload a PDF of the seller's disclosures that your client already signed, the PDF of the lead-based paint that your client already signed, and anything else that you think the listing agents or the buyer's agents should know about. It might be a list of improvements like new furnace, new hot water heater, new top, you know, whatever. It's this far from this school. It has access to this park. It had, you know, whatever, anything. You can put that in those um, document, uh, the upload document section. You put your photos in and um, you can actually put your photos in before it's live. And then oh. you can figure showing time. Yeah. Sharon. Yep. So I've noticed, um, a lot of the, the agent remarks and the public remarks are the same. They don't have is that be. fine? Or I mean, is, is there a requirement that they have to be different per real comp or anything like that? There's, there's no requirement one way or the other. Just know that the realtor remarks are only seen by the person who has logged into real comp. Okay. So whenever uh, Zillow and realtor.com and truly and all these uh, syndicated sites pick up the feed from the MLS, they only pick up the public remarks. Okay. So if you want to put something in there, like, Hey, the agent, there's a, there's a cat there. Don't let him out. Or the agents related to the homeowner, stuff like that. That's only, those are only things that the other person who logged in the MLS can see. So regarding like COVID precautions and things like that, would you put that in both spaces? No, because in um, uh, in the remarks, you have only a thousand characters. Oh. And believe it or not, those get eaten up pretty quick when you're trying to, I, I usually, I'll go to a Word document and I'll start typing something up and then I'll try and paste it in and see if, you know, if I had too many. And then you start going back and like, I'm going to use an ampersand instead of the word and, and I'm going to use a dash instead of comma space. You know, you're just trying to like shrink all these characters down so you can say everything you want to say. Okay. Um, Sharon, you said that yeah. you can upload the pictures before it's active. Yes, you can. Okay. Yep. No. So if I were to go here, I'm at partial save, submit listing. Oh, see, what didn't I do? Oh, I said there was a great room and I didn't put any. Okay, this isn't going to let me because you have to have the total number of bedrooms, total number of baths, and that has to equal the rooms that you put in here. 
But when you submit it the first time, even if it's just a partial save, it'll give you a link to be able to start putting photos up. Okay. Hey, Sharon, this is one quick yep. question, just a general question. So like yep. on the photos, if you're paying to have a photographer come in to do that, how does that generally work? How do you, how much time is there? Is that usually a long lead item or is that something that's very so, quickly? Typically, um, uh, you know, however quickly you can get the photographer to get in there, you know, if you use someone who is good at what they do, you can usually get somebody in there within a couple of days. Um, most that I have found will get you your photos back in 24 hours. And so what they'll do is they'll send you a link usually um, to wherever all the photos are, and then you download them onto your computer, and then you can sort them out, pick whichever ones you want to put up there. Good. I mean, I know this is kind of quick and dirty, but that's, you know, the point. Um, okay, let's go back here. So the listing process. Let me. All right. So obviously, you've already been doing your lead generating, you already converted it, you set your appointment. You've researched the house, you've put together your analysis. You drive around, see if there's any houses for sale by owner, stuff like that, because that client is gonna know everything about his neighborhood, way more than you do. So do your homework. Um, practice your presentation. Those are things that you should be doing now. Put together that listing presentation and designs, print it out, role play with each other. Like set an appointment with each other and sit down and do it. You know, if anybody wants to request um, a time to set aside, we did this right before quarantine hit uh, with everybody that was in coaching. We required them to have a mock listing presentation with other members in the office. Uh, most of them were ALC, but... Um, they would have to schedule the appointment, uh, reserve a conference room downstairs. They treated our other agent as a client and did their listing presentation and practiced it. And then the other agent would, you know, give them feedback and it was really cool. And it was, it was very helpful. Um, I'm hoping that that's something that we can kind of get back into doing, but you can do that with each other, right? You got to practice it. It's your appointment time, you show up, couple minutes early and you wait more than a couple minutes, like show up five, 10 minutes early, but just wait, go up there, maybe a minute or two early or right on time, never late, right? Present your presentation, walk around the house, take a look at the condition, right? You're gonna do all the stuff that you practice in your presentation. You're gonna ask for the business. A lot of people don't close their deal, ask them to sign get the ball rolling. After you've had your appointment and they said, yes, I'm good to go. You come back to the office or to your home, whatever. Upload everything into command because hopefully you already have an opportunity put together, right? And this person's already in your contact database and put them all up into the proper, um, let me see, do I have it up here? put it into the proper place in command for your compliance. Please hold opportunities. So under documents, under listed, you'll upload all this stuff, right? Your exclusive right to sell, your forms, you upload everything that you've got. These things are optional, right? Because it depends. You don't know if you're going to need it or not. And then you're going to turn around and you're going to submit it to the market center, right? And then they're going to let you know if you're missing anything. Just get that done right away. If anything else needs to be signed or initialed, if you missed a spot, they will tell you immediately. So just do that. Um Schedule any of those third-party vendors, right? Like if you have a stager that's going to come out or um, photographer, schedule them right away. Do you need any municipal inspections? 
find out if your municipality requires any city inspections, if you need a certificate of occupancy. Just don't, if you don't have a list somewhere, don't go crazy looking for a list. Just call the city clerk, wherever you're at. Do you need a certificate of occupancy for resale? I'm an agent. They may say no, not at all. They may say only for rentals, not for principal residences. Just find out because you're going to want, if you have to, you're going to want your seller to get that inspection done right away. So you can find out what kind of repairs need to be done because those things need to be done before you can close. Uh, create your partial save, which is what we were just going over. Get your sign put in. If you guys don't have a sign yet, order one now. They're like, $35, $40. It takes, I don't know, 10 days maybe for the guys here at MCE Signs. Just get it done and just stick it in your garage so that you're not stressing out. That's not an additional thing that you got to get done. You got to try and find. Um, lockbox. If you don't have a sentry lockbox, as soon as you have a signed uh, exclusive right to sell, call real comp and they will assign one to you. Okay. Then you start your marketing, start your marketing with us. Like as soon as you get that contract signed, throw a message in our private Facebook group and tell everybody what you've got. Stand and take a picture, you know, out on the street before you get back in your car and shoot a message out to everybody. There's like zero inventory around here. And if we can tell each other what we've got going on and what's coming soon, you'll get a ton of interest before you even go live. Because if we can keep it in the family and we can like double dip it as an office, that's awesome, right? Because that just helps everybody's profitability and we can all work together. Less chances of any kind of issues, right? Then Pete's just going to have to duke it out if something goes wrong. <laughs> It'll be perfect. He'll love it. <laughs> so, um, so then you can start. Yeah. Go ahead. Can you hear me? Yes. What company do you use for the signage? I use a company. Yeah, special called, company you use. Um, to to produce the signs or to put up the signs. Which one? Both. Both. Okay. So you're breaking up. Sorry. Can everybody else hear me? Yeah. Okay. Um, locally on the east side, there's a company called M. C E. They do a really good job. I personally, a couple years ago, just did all my signs up someplace online. They're aluminum signs. Um, that's just what I did. But, and then my installs are done by a company in Redford that's called C and D. You can look them up. Heidi, or not Heidi, sorry, Emily, who do you use? <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think I, I'm trying to think where I bought them from. I think it was just, I can look up in my email, but it was just like, a, you know, I'll have to look it up where I bought them from. But then um, my husband actually does ours because oh. he's a home inspector and we have all that stuff. So I have my signs in my, or my posts in my garage and he just puts them up for me. Oh, well, that's easy. There you and, go. Yeah, it makes it, it just, I mean, it's just one less step for me because I well, can for sure. I have them here and if it's, I can <clears> have them right. But right. yeah, the sign company, I will look and find out what I use because they were, it was actually a good, pretty good deal and they turned out really nice. Um, are they wood? Are they aluminum? What are they? They're, they're the, um, the metal, so the aluminum. Me too. I used build a sign. Build, you know, that sounds familiar. That might be what it is. Anyway. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Cause like they can make them with, well, everybody can like reflective ink. You can do all sorts of weird stuff. Yep. Don't get crazy though. Just get a sign. Even the corrugated plastic ones that they have are pretty thick. And I mean, yeah. those are, those are fine too. Yep. Yep. Um, this just popped into my mind. Little note for you guys. Um, I've actually never done it, but I always try to remember to do it. And I forget if you want to buy one of those little solar yard lights, like the little floodlights, but they're solar stick them in the ground right next to your for sale sign. And then at night, your signs lit up. Cool, right? Idea. I think that build a sign has them on there. You can buy them. Yeah. I remember, I, I just never remember when I'm actually doing it. <laughs> I remember it later. So that's always good. Okay. 
you'll do your marketing right online, Facebook, Instagram, uh, postcards, flyers, door knocking, circle prospecting, calling everybody around the neighborhood. Remember, you guys can use Red X. If you go to the about section of the coaching Facebook group, the user login and password is there. If you don't know how to use Red X, go to the coaching YouTube channel and there's a whole video with Robert Thronberg that used to be in our office. He used to use it a lot. And he walks through how to do all of that. Um, then you will hold open houses, hopefully someday soon. Um, and then it's always a good idea weekly to follow up with your seller. Like make it whatever day of the week works for you. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever is your day. Follow up with them. Let them know what the stats are. Look online, like uh, how many views have they gotten? Uh, on Real Comp, you can look at the hit counter, right? How many people have saved them? How many showings have they had? What has the feedback been from the showings? Um, what's going on in the neighborhood? Has anything else come up on the market? Has anything else gone pending or sold? Just every week, communicate, because that's all they want. If the time comes that you need to ask for a price reduction, the more you have done to communicate with them leading up to that, the easier that conversation is going to be and the more likely they're going to accept it because you've been giving them all this information that's going to support whatever that request is that you make. Make sense? Okay. So homework, put together a listing package, all the paperwork and all the documents, send it to me by Friday. If you have not done a mock offer, send me a mock offer, right? Because the time's going to come when you're going to have to do it. And it's better that you're prepared, at least having done it a couple times and not at all. Even better, create an opportunity and command that's just a dummy profile, right? A dummy contact, create the room in DocuSign, like get used to doing the whole process so that it's not overwhelming when you actually have to do it the first time. All right, so we are session number five, which means 25 contacts added into command for each session means that one through four, you guys should have at least 100 contacts in command. Where's everybody at? 2.30. Nice. Hey, here. What do you got? No, I was just saying I'm here. Oh, oh. How many contacts do you have put together in command? Do you know? Um, I have, I've been really slow, but I have close to 40. Okay. Well, get going. Yep. Keep, up, keep it up, you know, little by little. The, the more you get in there, the more you're keeping in touch with people. You can put them on smart plans and let it automatically do that for you. I have 176. Good job. You got them on smart plans? Up from 111 at the beginning of the F February. So. Oh, very good. Very good. 60 something in a month. That's awesome. Good for you. Thanks. Um, no, I don't have them on smart plans. It's actually, um, it's part of my goals for our WAM. Every, you know, every, every yep. week we send in yep. our goals. Um, I haven't, I, I've sent one person on a neighborhood nurture. Um, so yeah, it's, it's on my list of things to do. So, so why have you only sent one person? I don't, I, this week, this past week, it was not a good week for me. I was, it, I, I hardly did any, per, I'm going through some personal stuff at home and okay. whatever. So um, I, I'm not really sure. I don't really quite understand the neighborhood nurture. Like, and I think you and I have talked about this before and I don't want to hold up the class or anything, but I guess I don't understand the point of that specific smart plan. The point is, have you ever heard, I know, I hope, <laughs> have you heard me talk about, you know, the whole toothpaste analogy? Yes. What brand, of, what do you want to be? Do you want to be Crest? Do you want to be the first thing that pops into their mind? It's by getting your name in their email box repeatedly. That's what it's about. It's just another way for them to see your name associated to real estate 
coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. If there's nothing for sale in their neighborhood and the, and there's no properties to show them, you can't control that. Right. If there's no activity for them to be updated on, you can't control that, but at least they'll see your name. Yeah. That's all it is. It's all just about being top of mind and trying to provide some value. Yeah. I actually have one more question about the auto emails. Sure. So yep. my um, potential client has now waited till 2022 to buy. Okay. Um, and I, I talked to her like on, and I, I had her set up for like Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings. And I think I talked to her on like Wednesday and I left her on the auto email and I just recently took her off. But the more I think about it, the more I probably should keep her on the auto email just so she, when 2022 comes around, she can say, yep. Hey, she's been working with me since December of, you know, that's right. 2019 or, or whatever, you know, so did you have her like on a daily? I had her every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday morning. So switch it to once a week if you want. Or you can keep it three times a week. But you have to also incorporate a phone call like once a quarter, every three months. Hey, just checking in. How are you doing? I just want to make sure you're okay. Just keeping in touch. Let me know when you're ready. Yeah. I know you said next year and that's cool too. I just want to, you know, keep the lines of communication open. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the more I've been thinking about it, I'm like, yeah, I probably should have just kept her on there because again, that yep. keeps me top yep. of mind. And, yep. you know, then she can say that, yeah, she's been working with me for the past year or, you know, been in communication with me for the past year. Right. So I just wanted to get your opinion, but yeah, I will yep. re-add her. 